When 2018, um, I had got everything paid for up here. I didn't have a land payment when I was bored, so we bought another ranch south of Kadoka. Cross country, it's only about 40 miles, but it's a, like it's almost a whole different world. It's a, a little learning experience there. They have some badlands and some prairie, and then we, of course we have a running water through it, which is making it pretty uh, awesome ranch. There's been a little learning experience. I know we hop on four wheelers and take off everywhere we want to go around here and down there. You got to be a little more careful with the Badlands stuff. So it's rolling prairie, um, but it's right on the edge of the Badlands. So we have some Badlands, but it's not like all Badlands. It's pretty much prairie. And the south side of the ranch is actually the White River. The east side of the ranch is a highway and part of the north side of the ranch is the Badlands Wall where there, there is no fence, it's just a natural fence. There's probably less topsoil down there and you probably should allow a couple more acres per cow per year to run down there. Part of the ranch down at Kadoka is um, actually government land and quite a bit of it's deeded, probably a third or a fourth of it is government land. We have four of our own government pastures and we have a fifth pasture that there's us and four other people in. The way that works is you work it out with your um, grasslands person out a wall and you decide how many cattle you're going to put in each pasture and for how long. We work together and try to figure out a schedule so that we're using the pastures at different times of the year. We could go in the end of May, but we usually like to go in the 1st of July or so, let the pastures get a good head start, let the calves grow up a little bit, and then we rotate, and then we right, rotate through them at a different time every year so that that's helping the grass situation. The government land is understocked considerably, so like where you figure a couple acres per cow per month on the deeded, that they're they're figuring anywhere from like three and a third acres to over four acres. You could be running more cattle, but yet when you have a drought, you know that you're understocked and you're still gonna be all right. So it's kind of a give and take. The cattle are good. And if you don't graze it, eventually it will just, um, it'll turn into a giant weed patch. And um, that's no good. Six or eight years ago, we had a big fire. It burnt like 40,000 acres, and a lot of it was government land. They couldn't beat it because there was so much um, undercover and old grass there, and so much um, fuel for the fire that it was so hot that they they had a heck of a time getting it out, to the point that it could have been used even more. So to take the cattle away from the land would be a huge mistake. 